So this is a five light setup. You see there the soft key light. And sometimes we use the slightly larger soft box for that. Then we use a soft fill light, a backlight, and therefore our light is very tunable and adjustable. Um, that helps. Then we can add a kicker to give a light on the other side of the face to add more plasticity to give more dimension to a face can be very dangerous. When the person has a very pronounced nose and speaks with great temperament, uh, it could be that the kicker hits the nose and yes and no and yes and no and all the attention goes to the nose that is switched on and off and on and off. So you have to always adapt it to the kind of a face. Yeah, where are the eyes? Like your eyes, very easy. I can place the key light anywhere I want. Your eyes, a little bit more like Richard Gere, yeah, have to come a little bit down with the key light to catch them. Uh, how deep, and so on. Is the background projection. Yeah? Throw it out of focus, create the feeling of depth. There is no really valid rule where a key light should be. But most of the time we would think that we would place the key light <coughs> coming from above and then we'd look, uh, we try to catch both eyes. We try and put the shadow of the nose down the crease so that it becomes less uh, noticeable, less obtrusive. Also, sometimes it helps if you look for, uh, there's a little triangle here. Uh, and sometimes you can make that quite pronounced. <coughs> now we have to deal with the contrast, uh, and that's, of course, the function of the fill light. Now the fill light would be far too much. Then, of course, we can play with the position of the fill light. Leave it there. I'll move the light here, where we keep the shadow. But now we'll make the shadow gentler. That would be too much. If you want a rule, then it's like a one to two ratio between the key light and the fill light. Film, you can go much higher ratio, make it look more dramatic. Now the nice thing is that our light is so concentrated that when you shine it down as a backlight, you're never going to really disturb the camera lens. The lighting stand could go, can it go higher than this? So then we have a stand extension to go higher. And also, the other purpose is that now the lighting stand is in the picture. And if we move the stand and the light out of picture, we may be in a backlight position where we don't really want to be. The the, these lights, you can run any position, upside down. Uh, there are other lights with a built-in transformer. Those you would not want to use upside down. But this one you can use upside down, any position, straight down, doesn't make any difference. Now we try and get the cable out. Now we can move the whole stand over where it gets out of the picture. So now, again, we go full blast and we tilt it down a bit so we catch the shoulders. And then when we say, okay, this is a possible position, we dim the light down so at the moment, we're just 
playing a little bit, saying, yes, we want the backlight to separate the person out of the background, uh, to create a little bit more feeling of three-dimensionality. And then what we could possibly do is add, I think in America it's not called that. Uh, the British call it the kicker. It's a light on the other side of the face. The kicker, and we may have to go, maybe you put your hair back a little bit on the right side also. Okay, now this is a very strong effect. Um, and we may want to keep it away from her shoulder. And now again, we tune it down. Okay, then the next thing we can do is to light the background. When we play with this, we'll see that now we would want other light also on the background. This would be just an effect to match other light. And now we see that when we use the light from this position, that on this side it's a lot brighter than on the other side. So now we can use our graduated gray filters if we want to. Same ones that you have on the camera. O3. This is an O3. An O3 will not do the trick for this one. So we take again the light shield ring out. And an O3 filter will be too weak to balance it. An O6 would be the one. Um, so it's a graduated gray filter that takes down some of the light intensity. And another thing that we can show is that the feeling when you put an accent of light. Um, now we could mix it and let a little bit of light, other light come on the background uh, and, and add that. Maybe even take the grid off to spill some light on the background and just work with the balance of it. And it's a completely different mood. When you put the accent below the shoulders or take it up. Yeah, this looks a little bit more like an interrogation or something. Yeah. And you put it <laughs> below the shoulders and it, it even lower. Yeah, and, it, and it's a different character. And, and you look more at the face and then you tune it down. Um, and you play with the intensity. So sometimes what we can do is to use the light as a projector. We put a M size gobo, Roscoe catalog, 300 different patterns. Leaves, breakups, uh, all kinds. So this is a window effect in focus um, or throw it out of focus. When you throw it out of focus, you don't go in with the lens if you do that. Eventually, you will pick up the dirt on the condenser lens. The condenser lenses are never clean. Here, see? So now we can throw different colors in there to give it different feeling and effect. Um, make a sandwich. Uh, use one of those things together with a gobo. Um, uh -huh. Now we're in Las Vegas. Uh, and we can out of focus in Las Vegas. Go nearly abstract or put it in focus. Um, 
So you can imagine, it's like endless games. So this is just a very simple setup that of course we can now go and play and modify in many, many different ways.